So one of the things we notice really quickly when we're dealing with PowerShell is that some of these commands can get pretty long. And so a way to deal with that <clears throat> is we can shorten those commands using aliases. Now there are a few other uses for aliases as well, but one of the most common ones is to shorten commands so those commands aren't quite as long and uh, don't take quite as much typing to pull off. <clears throat> Now, we can find the aliases that are available using the command get-alias, and that will display all of them, and of course it scrolls off the screen. So let's do this one page at a time. So I'm going to send that down the pipeline to more, and that'll break them up one page at a time. And so here are my aliases, and this is what the alias is, and this is what it translates to. So if you type clear, PowerShell will translate that to the clear host. So clear is an alias for clear host. Um, and then you can see the whole long list of them here. Now, if you want to look for a specific, uh, specific alias, you can do get alias. And let's look at the alias dir. Dir is an alias for get child item. Now, if you want to see if there are other aliases for get child item, then the command would be get alias definition get child item and it's going to show you that we have four different aliases dir gci and ls all of which translate to get child item all right that's cool what if i want to create my own alias so a couple of the commands we might use on a regular basis might be something like get help or get command so if i do a get alias looking for a definition of get command, you'll see that we have one, it's GCM. But if I do the same thing for get help, you'll see we don't have an alias for get help, and so we get this. Command could not find a matching alias because an alias with the definition of get help does not exist. Okay, cool. What if I want to create one? Well, that's where we use the new alias command. And the new alias command is actually pretty straightforward. So let's do a get help on the new alias and we'll see that hey it actually all fits on one page so you know it's straightforward so as new alias we give it a name and then a value now the name is what we want the alias to be the value is what we want the alias to translate to and then there's a handful of other things confirm force options um, most of the time we're just going to use these two right here now you'll notice that name and value are both in square brackets. That means they are positional parameters, which means I can just do new alias, and I want gh to be get help. Now if I do a get alias, looking for the definition of get help, we'll see that we have gh which equals get help. So now I can type gh on whatever I want. Let's do new alias since we were just looking at that one. And it'll get help for new alias. Now obviously I can make these whatever I want. Um, there is something to be aware of and that is your aliases are only good for as long as your session is active. So if I were to close this session and open up a new session, my aliases go away. That's a little bit of a problem, especially if I have a lot of them. But there are a few other things that we can do with aliases as well. So let's do GCM, short for Git Command, uh, on the noun alias. So give me all my commands with alias as a noun. And you'll see we have a handful of them. Get alias, well, we've seen that. New alias, we just did that. Set alias changes an existing alias, but I also have these two, export and import aliases. So the idea with, let's do a gh export alias. I'm going to pipe that one to more. And this tells us it's going to export information about the currently defined aliases to a file. Well, the reason we do that is so that we can re-import them. So I can do a export, and I can export all of my aliases. And then when I come into PowerShell, I can just re-import that, and that will give me all of my current aliases again. And you'll see right here, 
Does it can generate the data in a CSV format or as a series of set alias commands? And here's the thing that you can add to a session or to a Windows PowerShell profile. That's interesting. So before we dive into that real quick, so I can export my aliases and then re-import my aliases. Let's say I've got 10 or 12 of them that I use on a regular basis. I can just re-import them every time I come in. But I can also put them in a Windows PowerShell profile. What's that? Well, here's where Get Help comes to our rescue again. Clear the screen here. Get Help. And I'm just going to do a search for profile because... Well, I know what it is, but we're going to pretend like we don't. So get help profile, and here are all of my commands that are related to that, but here is my about profiles help file. Describes how to create and use a Windows PowerShell profile. So I can do get help, or gh, since I have my alias, on about underscore profile. And you are definitely going to want to pipe this to more. And this will tell you all about creating and using profiles in PowerShell. And so the idea behind this is you can create a profile and every time you open up PowerShell, it will run that profile script. And if you put all of your aliases in there, then your aliases will automatically be configured for you every time that you open PowerShell. Now, couple of thoughts on this one, which I don't want to exit yet couple of thoughts about this. Uh, that's great as long as I'm working on this machine. So if I move to another machine, my profile isn't there. So keep that in mind. Um, depending on what you do, if you're always working at the same machine, setting up that profile might make a lot of sense. Um, but if you're bouncing from machine to machine, that might not be so useful. Let's say you're a service tech and you're working on different people's computers all the time. So then you go to different computers, open up PowerShell, and you don't have that profile. So one way to mitigate that is you can put all of your aliases in an export file at a shared network location. And then whenever you sit down, you can just import alias from that shared network location. And that would accomplish the same task. Okay, um, I think that covers everything that we need to talk about with PowerShell aliases. They can be a very, very useful, very powerful tool, uh, and they can really simplify things. Just be aware that using aliases can make your life a lot easier, but it doesn't necessarily make somebody else's life a lot easier if they're coming in behind you and following you especially if you use aliases in your scripts that can get really really confusing for them so you'll notice that i almost never use i'll never make my own aliases uh for any of these videos that i'm doing and that's because i want to make sure that when we're using it when i'm demoing it i'm doing it the actual commands and not running aliases that you may not have okay uh there we go hopefully that will be helpful and uh, can help you simplify some of what you do in PowerShell.